You're listening to Shows That Shape Me, a podcast by What's On Stage. This week's guest is actor Stefan Rodri. Stefan's acting career spans 20 years on stage and screen. His West End theatre credits include Absent Friends, Posh, The Mentalist and This House. On TV, he's known for roles in Gavin and Stacey, Apple Tree Yard and Under Milk Wood. He's currently starring in Tracy Let's Killer Joe, running at Trafalgar Studios until the 18th of August. Here is Stefan Rodri. The most memorable uh, production that I've been in, gosh, you know, I, I, I wouldn't know where to start, really. The, uh, I have to think of things that stick out. And I, I've spent a lot of time at Theatre Cloyd. Um, I sort of cut my teeth there. I didn't work there really until my 30s, but I did loads and loads of plays there and, and um, learnt so much from Terry Hands, particularly, and other great directors that I worked with there. Uh, and I suppose... You know what really sticks out that sort of changed everything really in my career perhaps from then on was well firstly go in there for a season to work with terry uh but then the, the second year i went there i took over in uh, a um, production of the norman conquests because um i was far too young but uh, i was in another play. i was in of mice and men in the studio and uh they were doing the whole of the Norman Conquest, the whole of the trilogy in the main house. And uh, in the middle of the, on the second preview of the second of the plays, Living Together, Graham Turner, who was playing Norman, snapped his Achilles on stage uh, with 20 minutes to go and bravely sold it on to the end, then was ambulanced straight out of there. And then his leg in full plaster, because it's really, that's really bad, snapping your Achilles. He, he couldn't walk for three months, you know. Um, and so they had to look for someone <laughs> over a weekend. Uh, Cut a long story short, I think Terry looked for someone who'd done it recently because that would have saved time with the lines. Uh, I, as I say, I was in the, nobody mentioned me, but I, in, secretly I kind of thought, I wonder if he let me. <laughs> and on the, so it happened on a Friday night, I think. On a Sunday night, I got a phone call from him saying, Could I, would I go and see him? He didn't offer it to me then. He said, how would I feel if he did offer it to me? <laughs> and then on the Monday morning, he did ask me to do it. I had two performances of Mice and Men that day because we had a school's matinee and a show that night. But in the meantime, I started learning it and working and sort of nipping from the studio on t- into the main house to work with Terry to try and you know get up to speed. Then all day Tuesday, I worked with the cast and learned more. And then all day Wednesday, did the same. And on Thursday, we did a dress rehearsal and I went on that night without the book. <laughs> and I, I, to this day, and it's the lead, Norman, you know. To this day, I have no idea how I did that. My brain could not do that now. I was 31 or whatever, far too young to play Norman. But, you know, but it didn't end there because it was a trilogy. Um, we did that for a few days and then they'd been rehearsing Run Around the Garden. The third, you know, they'd done all three. They'd played... Uh, um, table manners for a little while and then they had to open round around the garden so then I had to do that within a week and then they would bring in table manners back so I had to do that within a week and then finally I knew all three and we did all we would do whole trilogy days and things you know uh, I, I as I say I have no idea how I did that it it seems you know completely impossible now to to my you know to even think about it but I suppose under pressure, it's remarkable what the brain can do and what the, you know, and, and especially with an incredibly supportive and wonderful director and, a, and an incredible supportive cast who, um, who were just astounding, really, in the way that they nannied me through it, you know. The most memorable production I've ever seen uh, is, again, I, it's, I don't know if I have one that sticks in the mind. I, I know that um, there are productions that were important to me in my uh, informing me and in, and informing my love of theatre. My dad used to talk. My late dad used to talk. He was a, a great man of the theatre in in Swansea, and you know he was the the linchpin of the local uh, Welsh language amateur drama company and very influential in drama in Wales. And uh, you know was very glad that I I get to do I got to do what I do. Uh, and he would have loved to have done it himself. But he used to say um, that when he, th- he used to take me to Stratford, we'd go on holiday sometimes, we'd go in the caravan and we'd go to the Cotswolds and then up to Stratford and things like that. And, uh, and they'd, take me to, um, they'd take me and my sister to see plays at the RSC, you know. And of course, at seven, eight, nine years of age, I didn't necessarily, couldn't necessarily follow the plots or understand all the language and so on. But he used to say years later that, uh, there was one production of, uh, I think it was Henry V with Alan Howard in 1976, I would have been about eight or nine, where he said I was just transfixed, you know. I mean, funnily enough, going back to what I was talking about earlier, it was Terry Hands who directed it. 
and uh, Alan Howard was the poster boy of the RSC throughout, throughout most of the 70s actually and, uh, and um, I can still remember it you know I mean these huge ramps with these soldiers running and coming down and fighting and you know and just absolutely yeah transfixing for me and uh, you know and, and the, my dad had died by the time I finally got to work at the RSC you know but it was just wonderful then to be there and to remember back to that so that was incredible really um, I, I haven't worked at the, well I mean they'd knocked down that main house by now by the time I went there but I worked at the Swan and I did see another very memorable production for me when I was at, about, at university by then when the Swan had just opened and um, I uh, w we went up as as undergraduates to to watch everything that was on for a whole week before starting our second year you know and uh, I remember seeing the two, two noble kinsmen with Imogen Stubbs playing the jailer's daughter um, uh, stunning, absolutely wonderful, and um, Hugh Corshi and Gerard Murphy as the two noble kinsmen. And I got to work with Gerard many years later then. In um, he's, he's died now, actually, I think he died like a year or two ago, poor old Gerard, and a uh, lovely man. And uh, I got to work with him on Trials and Cressida with Terry Hans directing at Cloyd many years later. But I do remember that. I mean, we saw a few things that week. Not all of it great, but that one production when The Swan was new, to see what can be done you know it felt it was the mid 80s you know and it felt that theater was changing really you know the rsc was changing the you know the, that big main house was going to have to go which it did eventually you know and the swan had come in with the thrust stage and the globe would, would be open soon and you know and so that was changing in terms of the classical theater was changing but also everything in theater was beginning to change and become less stuffy you know and to see Imogen Stubbs in Shakespeare above you know hanging from this huge pole in an Elizabethan replica theater like the Swan and you know I mean it was it felt exciting you know and as I say many years later then to go there and work at the Swan was just quite a thrill to remember back to that yeah the production I wish I'd seen is one that actually I have recently seen, this is why I'm going to say it, because I have recently seen a filmed version of it. And I went to the BFI recently um, because they were showing Nicole Williamson in Hamlet from 1969 in the Roundhouse. Um, Marianne Faithful as Ophelia and uh, Tony Hopkins as Claudius. Tony Hopkins is a few months younger than uh, Nicole Williamson for playing his, his stepfather. Um, and uh, going back to Theatre Cloyd, I did... In, in 2001, I did uh, King Lear with Nicole Williamson playing Lear. And uh, I didn't know who he was, you know. And why would, I mean, I was a, an actor in my mid-30s. I didn't, you know, I mean, I, nobody really knew who he was. But, um, you know, I was told that he was the, one, of the, one of, if not the greatest classical actor of his generation, you know. That he eclipsed Tony Hopkins, that he, you know, I mean, uh, and many of those of that era, he was he was the one to aspire to be like, you know. But he went off to America and he went off the rails very much as well. I think he was pretty much off the rails from the beginning, you know. And by 2001, when Terry Hans brought him back to play Leah, um, his power had waned a lot, you know. Um, he was an alcoholic and um, he, um, you know, got away with it for many years and uh, as, as many do and he, but it, it, you know, it will catch up eventually. And there were, there were glimpses when he played Leah, of his brilliance, and it was exciting. He was an incredibly exciting actor because you didn't always know. But I mean, I say exciting because sometimes you, you know, he was not that great, and you, I mean, he was unpredictable in that in that sense. Um, but I wish I'd known how good he was. I, mean, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe it would have spoiled it. Maybe I would have been incredibly disappointed if I'd really known how good he was. Because when I saw this, I was fascinated and I went to see this Hamlet. I'd heard about it. It was legendary. They did it on Broadway as well. And, you know, but they did it first at the Roundhouse. And it was one, probably the greatest use of Shakespeare I've ever heard. It was phenomenal. If you ever get a chance to see it, it is an incredible, he uses the language so incredibly well. He just just dynamic, you know, absolutely dynamic, just trips off his tongue. And and the whole production as well, I mean, they're, they're all great, you know, but he especially as Hamlet, it is so unlaboured, so intelligent, so sharp and witty, and and um, I wish I'd seen it. I wish I'd seen it, and I, and I mean, I maybe didn't respect him enough when I worked, I played Edgar, you know, and, you know, as poor Tom, you know, I have those scenes on the Heath with the, the Fool and Kent and Leah and Edgar, and. 
and it, you know it, it could be fun and great and you know but I had no idea really the genius of the man I was working with because it was it wasn't really there any longer you know it was sad um, there was there was some power sometimes in the madness you know but there was certainly not that um, discipline there was no technique that you know it was a lot of it was gone and, and that was very sad um, but I'm really glad I've seen it. they've filmed it and so you can see it anytime you know and he was a great he really was and I feel privileged to have worked with him even though he was past his best by the time I did. Which person alive or dead would I most like to work with? I don't know, there are so many. Um, I guess, oh gosh, I mean, it's a very, it's always an impossible question to know who. There are people that uh, I, I, I've sort of briefly come across but not quite worked with um, that I really admire. Um, I mentioned earlier Andrew Scott, I think he's phenomenal um, he I've, I've been in a scene with him in a televised Shakespeare um, I've been in a television where I didn't have a scene with Ben Wishaw recently and I would love to work with Ben I think he's phenomenal um, in that same Shakespeare I briefly didn't have a scene but I was getting out of a car whilst getting into another car was Judy Dench and I, I have seen Judy Dench once on stage and she was incredible and it's, I mean, you know, sadly, it's probably too late now to have any ambition of working on stage with her, um, maybe on screen, but, but I don't think she'll be doing much stage now. Um, I would love to work with her. She was incredible. And I always tell young actors, actually, when um, they worry about getting something wrong or, tri you know, I, I always remember, I saw her in a production of a play called Filumina. It was an Italian play, I can't remember who it was by, in the late 90s. One of the last things she's done on stage, actually. Um, and she, several times, maybe like half a dozen times, she tripped up on her words and it didn't phase it in the slightest. She just carried on and because that's what people do. People do stumble on their words and it's like, you know, not a problem in the slightest. It just didn't, but she was so alive and so um, present and, you know, incredible. So I'd love to work with her. Thank you for listening to Shows That Shake Me, a podcast by What's On Stage. If you've enjoyed listening, please do subscribe on iTunes so that you don't miss a single episode.